10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We are live. Hello, everyone. This is Michael Voss, the Dragon of the Southern Tier, here with you on another episode of No Sound Bites Allowed. I'm happy to be with everybody, and I hope we're all going to have some fun today because, well, there's interesting stories and dumb stories that we're going to cover during your lunch period here. We're going to have some fun with that. I'm going to start off with, uh, well, first, I want to mention. If you haven't seen it, uh, yesterday there were a couple of articles at the MVASS.com, the MVAS uh, website, which are dealing with impeachment, talking about Representative Al Green, the complete failure to impeach President Trump, and the embarrassment of the Democratic Party in even proposing this and completely failing on it. But that being said, and do check that out, I also do want to mention very quickly that we do have uh, our friends, of course, over at the Belmar and the Park Diner. Do check them out. Obviously, we support them all. We'll talk about that later. But I want to get into this. And I am going to go straight to the number one thing that really is just... I heard about this. I said, you got to be kidding me. This is stupid. And it is the fact that, quote, liberal paper straws don't work. Trump campaign starts selling plastic straws. That's coming directly from USA Today. It has been published at 10.30 a.m. on July 19th. That's today. And what? I mean, this is stupid. And and I don't mean this from uh, the, the point of view of President Trump because it's marketing. You know, he's selling campaign stuff for the 2020 election. And that's perfectly fine. I'm good with that. But the fact that it's we're talking about straws just blows me away. Now, obviously, I have John the intern in here with me. Hello. And I want to hear what John the intern has to say about all this. I think you summed it up perfectly. It's dumb. I don't know why people are being... It's just outrage culture at its finest. With people getting mad over just the smallest things. Well, seriously, and, and... Folks, if you didn't understand, there is an outrage that is ongoing and Mm -hmm. it's starting to grow. You said it's on Twitter? It is on Twitter. This is where I first saw the issue. It's going to blow up. I mean, they just went on sale today, and I'm sure it's going to blow up even more. People are going to be outraged that how dare Donald Trump, our president, sell straws. Okay, let's get this straight, folks. Okay, he's selling straws. Oh, my God. There are straws that are, it's MAGA straws, okay, MAGA straws. Matter of fact, I got an image just for this, okay? It's, there you go. The next progressive outrage, MAGA straws. Oh my God, 2020 will never survive. The world is going to end. The oceans will become nothing but straws. I mean, come on, let's get serious here. Is this the biggest thing that's on the mind of progressives? And I don't mean Democrats. Let's be clear. I'm not talking about Democrats. I'm talking about the fringe, liberal, progressive, out there, left fielders. We're talking about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We're talking about Omar, Ilan Omar. We're talking about citizen action. We're talking about progressive leaders of tomorrow, otherwise known as plot. We're talking about the fringe, the guys who are way out there. They're losing their minds over straws? Really? And it's not just here in the United States, uh, because I was doing some research on this. And, you know, it's not just the United States, but it's also in England. According to the Guardian newspaper, uh, this came out on May, uh, May 22nd of this year, 2019. Plastic straws, cotton buds, and drink stirrers to be banned in England as of 2020, April 2020. And I got to say to you, it's... It's really amazing to me that people are losing their minds about straws and they're like, oh, we've got to get rid of, if we get rid of straws, the environment will be okay. Everyone will be fine. Everything will be safe. No, it won't. Guess what? 
if you don't get a single straw, if nobody, if everyone buys every single straw that President Trump sells, or you don't, it's not going to change a bloody thing. Because five Asian countries dump more plastic into oceans than any anyone else combined in the world. Okay? And you know where that article comes from and that headline comes from? Forbes. Forbes magazine back in April of 2018. This is old news. The plastic is not coming from America. The plastic is not coming from England. It's coming from five countries. It's coming from Vietnam, China, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Thailand. That's where all the, I believe it's three major Asian rivers have two-thirds of all the, uh, or approximately that, uh, most of the uh, waste and garbage that's floating into the Pacific Ocean and the world's oceans comes from three rivers in, in Asia. Mm -hmm. This is crazy, man. It's, it's but, just a selective outrage, too. I mean, you're right. Don't they have anything better to do? <laughs> We, we had the minimum wage bill. By the way, I did an article on minimum wage and how much of a lie that is and how bad it is. And that'll be coming out a little bit later today. But uh, yeah, there's the minimum wage that just got out there. Total outrage on that. There's the increase in the smoking age in New York State. There's outrage about that. There's, uh, what, uh, there's the whole thing with the drone in Iran and we're shooting down their drones and they're trying to shoot our drones. There's international intrigue. There's the Middle East, you know, always constantly trying to blow itself up. But people are losing their minds over a straw because it happens to come from Donald Trump. It's, I, I have no words. I really don't anymore. And just when you think, like, I thought it could get pretty bad with, like, selective outrage. I thought I had seen it all. But then I saw the straws this morning. Um, this is makes sense to me. Look, if there's anyone out there, and I'm, uh, you know, we're doing this live. It's on Facebook during lunch, and, and Giovanni Scaringi has joined us. Hey, Doctor Scaringi, my good friend, and I heard you on the radio today. You sounded great. He is an ex excellent councilman, and probably will be a great mayor, if not higher office soon. But, hey, Gio. Uh, you know, I, and I'm listening to people and I, I want to see people's comments on this. I really want to hear people tell me, are you personally outraged that President Trump for his reelection will have straws that emphasize or symbolize America being great? Is, is that an outrage to you? Is that going to let you not sleep at night? Is that a story that needs to be front and center on Twitter or social media? The news has to cover it. It should be on C. You know, you'll probably be on MSNBC and the rest of them in CNN. It, this, do you really care about that? Because I, I'm just amazed that it's even a story. I, I really am. This is stupid. But yet, it's in the news. It's trending right now. People are losing their minds about it. I, I can't stand it. it. It's stupid. I'll say this. I'm definitely going to buy some straws when I get home. Yeah, you know. You know what? It worked on me. <laughs> Good job on the marketing campaign. Yeah. And by the way, the straws are about $1.50 a piece for like 15 straws or something like that. It, it's just, I, I don't even have words for it. I really don't. But I, I wanted to start because if you needed a laugh for your lunch break, there you go. People are protesting straws for the 2020 election. I'm sure all of the Democratic nominees will certainly come out and say that they will never use a straw and there'll be 20 pictures showing them all using straws and it'll be just stupid. So I'm going to leave that where it is unless someone decides to comment on this and I'm going to go on to the next thing, which is, you know, far, far more interesting, <laughs> I think. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about New York State decided in its incredible wisdom that we should ban smoking. Um, in particular, that they changed the age of smoking in, the, in New York State. And this was effective as of July 16th. It was yet another one of, one of the wonderful gifts that people in New York received from Governor Cuomo. 
because he is such a giving and kind, uh, what do you call him? Dictator? Uh, king. I think king works pretty well, the Emperor, monarchy. Emperor, yeah, monarch. Mm-hmm. Um, so Cuomo, in his ultimate wisdom, along with the single-party state legislator, le- legislature, decided that smoking for those who are under 21 is just a bad idea in New York State, that we can't allow that. And so the article uh, in particular is New York raises statewide smoking age to 21. It's in um, Time Magazine, and it was published on July 16th. And so you can look into this a little bit if you want. I uh, find it particularly annoying because let's think about this for a second, and this is where it gets me. And you're, you're how old are you now, John? The intern? I am 19, about to turn 20 in five days. Okay, so this is you. Yep. This is you. Mm-hmm. So now, you, whether you wanted to or not, you have no choice. It has been removed from you, the option to be able to have an e-cigarette, to be able to go out and uh, have a drink. Well, that's always been Actually, yeah. well, let me run down the line. According to progressives and Democrats, like Governor Cuomo, like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, like Anthony Brindisi and many others, They want you to be able to vote from the age of 16, right? Mm Mm-hmm. If not younger. If not younger. Because you're mature enough to be able to vote at 16. But you are not mature enough to see an ad for cigarettes, whether it's in print, video, or any other format, and not rush on out and get a cigarette. You're old enough to vote, but you're not mature enough to see a movie with, say, Arnold Schwarzenegger or uh, anybody out there, see a movie where someone uses a gun and you are not smart enough to not rush out, get a gun, and go kill thousands of people. Um, You are smart enough, you're, you're old enough to get a provisional driver's license, but you're not good enough to uh, drink. And you're good enough to die for the country, but you're not good enough for anything else. Does this make sense to anyone? Does it make sense to you? I don't think they realize um, that the PA border is about 20 minutes for me to five minutes. And as a cigar smoker, I already go to PA to buy my cigars because it's cheaper. I don't think they realize that I can just go to a different state. You're literally just going to cut your revenue if you do this. Well, actually, it's already happened. Yeah. When they first did the smoking ban, uh, it's been shown in study after study, most bars and uh, many eateries lost 30% of their business when New York State put in the smoking ban. Not that they, you could have had, and one of the options was, you can have a place that's smoking and another business that's non-smoking, and they could compete in the marketplace. Now, instead, they said no one can smoke in any public place. Okay, that's fine. And businesses lost a lot of money. And people got fired and lost their jobs. Yay, progressivism. But they never took into account that the sales in New Jersey, in Pennsylvania, went through the roof. They went through the roof because people could go other places and get cheaper cigarettes. And people went to Pennsylvania. I know we're like 15 minutes away from the Pennsylvania border, people would go out to bars and restaurants in Pennsylvania where they could have a cigarette and be out and about rather than staying here in New York. So it's just another reason. Why would you want to live in the state? I I mean, it's yeah, but there's a bigger issue for me. There's a bigger issue for me, which is when we look at this, what this is really saying is that you don't have freedom. It's a, it's, this Mm -hmm. is an attack on your personal freedom. The pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of happiness clause, where you have the right to make decisions for yourself that make you happy. Whether or not they're the right decisions, whether they're the best decisions, it doesn't matter. It's your decision. It's your choice. And we're saying to anyone, based on their age, which I believe Democrats call or progressives call it ageism, it's a bias against people based on their age, that you are too young to make decisions But at the same time, we want you to make more decisions. 
this is why the Democratic Party fails at so many of the issues that they do. Because on one hand, they're saying something, and on the other hand, they're completely opposed to it. They are confused. They have no idea. You can vote, but you can't have a cigarette because you're susceptible to marketing. Have you ever seen an election campaign? How much marketing is there in that? It's, I think they're doing it so that they can, and they want to lower the voting age just so they can get more and more people to vote Democrat because it sounds really good to the younger people who don't, who haven't had life experiences or haven't worked a job, don't pay taxes, or don't know much about politics if they go, well, we'll give you all this quote unquote free stuff. Well, yeah, at 16, you've never held a job. We're going to give you free stuff. You don't even know what that means. Well, of course, everything in your life at 16 has pretty much been free. You got it from your parents. You didn't, you went to school, you got lunches and food and clothing from your parents from school. You got everything free. You've never earned anything. The average, and you know, uh, the overwhelming average person in America at 16, you haven't earned anything. You haven't worked for anything. You don't know what the difference is between free and something that you have to work for. That's, it's just so, it's upsetting to me. It, it drives me nuts. It's very, very upsetting. And I think it, it's aggravating, I think, to most people when you have to say that you're good enough for this, but you're not good enough for that. You're smart enough to do something that's going to give me a political advantage, but you're not smart enough to live your life. And I, I, I have to believe that's got to piss people off. Does it piss you off? I mean, oh, you're it, 20. You're about mm, to be 20. Does it? How does it make you feel? It's ridiculous. And especially, I just, I don't know why I continue to be in this state every day. It's, it takes away personal freedom. Um, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I greatly don't think, it sounds nice on paper. We're going to lower the, you know, we're going to increase the smoking age so young people don't smoke. But at the same time, most of us live like 10, 15 minutes from the PA border. It's not going to change anything. If someone wants to do minute, something, they're going to do you it. You can't smoke, but they want you to have legal marijuana. They want you to be able to smoke marijuana, but you can't smoke a cigarette. It's ridiculous. It's it's crazy. If I'm Does gonna, this make sense to anyone? Go not on, to mention, if we're going to do something, we're going to do it. <laughs> I understand that, but... We're talking about the legal. So they want to legalize marijuana so you can smoke that, but they won't let you smoke a cigarette. You can go because you're susceptible to advertising and elections have more advertising than anything else put together, which is more manipulative than anything else put together. It's stupid. It is. It is. If you look at it from, if you just take a step back and just look at what are they actually saying, what are they actually doing, it is insulting. You are insulting the very people you are pitching this towards. And that's what we get from Emperor Cuomo. You're too stupid to understand I'm trying to manipulate you. That's how I understand it. I mean, maybe someone who's listening to this, maybe you have a different opinion. It seems that John the intern agrees with me. Maybe someone who's watching this on Facebook, maybe you have a different opinion about it. That, that's why I see it. I don't know. Am I wrong? I don't think you are. Okay. And yes, smoking's bad and you shouldn't smoke. And I, at 51, don't care. <laughs> They're not banning me from smoking in my house. Although in some cities in California, yes, they don't want you to smoke even in your own house. Did you know that? I did not, no. Yes, in several cities in California, they've made it illegal for you to smoke in your own property. In your own home, you cannot smoke. It is banned in all the city, in all the state. You cannot smoke. Look it up. You'll see. You'll see what I mean. But while you're going to do that, I want to talk a little bit about the shame of the day, which happens to be the squad, or otherwise known as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Ayanna Presley, Ilan Omar, and Rashida Tlaib. Yes, the squad. And it's Game of Thrones, shame on them. I mean, complete shame on them because somehow they believe they are the only women and the only women of color who have ever been elected to Congress. I mean, that's how they come off. These guys, they, they really pissed me off. 
because every time they're talking, you, you can't say that. You can't criticize them because they're women of color. You can't talk about their issues without saying, without giving deference to the fact that they're women and women of color. So what? You know, Nancy Pelosi is a woman. Big deal. I criticize her and everyone criticizes her on a regular basis. There's no problem with that. She's a politician. She's respected. She's the Speaker of the House. She still is a politician. You can question her. Um, what is it? Representative uh, Jackson Lee. She's a woman and black and she's well known. What about what's her name? Um, who wanted to threaten. She's promoting all the riots and for having uh, uh, Democrats go out and attack uh, uh, conservatives. What, what's her name? Black woman. I can't think of her name. You know what I'm talking about. No, I have no clue. <laughs> she is the black representative who was on... Maxine Waters? Maxine Waters, thank you. Maxine Waters, black, a woman, in Congress forever. Who, who is this squad suddenly to be so uppity and so angry that people criticize them and every time you criticize them, it always comes back to, but we're women. We're women of color. You can't say that to us. Why not? Why can't we criticize them? I don't hear them saying the same thing to any of the Republican women who are in Congress, who are senators, who are... I don't hear them saying anything like, oh, you can't criticize any of those women. And many of them are also ethnically, uh, you know, non-white. I don't hear them saying, oh, we got to stick up for those people. Do you? Nope. And that's the thing that gets me. It's like, where is this coming from? Suddenly, they're the only ones. They're the only ones. I've never heard uh, Maxine Waters. I have never heard uh, Representative Jackson Lee, Sheila Jackson Lee, or any of the others, um, Representative Velasquez, Garcia. I've never heard any of them say, oh, you can't. You can't talk about what I've, the bills I've written, the positions I've taken, because I'm a woman. I don't hear Kamala Harris, Senator Kamala Harris, on the campaign trail saying, oh, you know what, you have to vote for me because I'm a black, well, she has said that actually, but she's not complaining about people who criticize her or disagree with her, other than Joe Biden, for her being a black woman. You know, it, it's this isn't a new thing. What is it with these guys? I wish I could tell you. I really do. I have no clue. Am I wrong? I don't think you are. When have you ever been wrong? Well, not often, I like to believe. But, you know, <laughs> at the same time, others disagree. But I don't know. It, maybe it's me. Am I being sexist here? Is it sexist to even say that the squad... I mean, really, the squad, really... They don't even know what... The, you've never been in the military. Not a single one of them have ever been in the military. You've never been in a sports team. You don't know what a squad is. They're not a squad. They may be a squawk, but they're not a squad. Um, you know, none of these guys have any idea. The squad. Okay, you know, and I'm looking at them. Who cares? They happen to be women of color. And? Have they gotten many bills passed? Uh, to my knowledge, no. <laughs> So they're ineffective at best. Uh, they are highly ineffective. I mean, come on, the Green New Deal. Every Democrat out there ran away from it. Every one of them. None of them voted for it. So they're useless. Right now we have, uh, what is it? Omar has put out, she's on her anti-Israel, anti-Jewish train wreck. And no one supports that. Oh, yeah. I mean, name a bill that they've been behind that anyone supports. Bernie Sanders was co-sponsoring something with AOC for a little bit. They can co-sponsor anything they want. No one wants to follow it. <laughs> That's like Anthony <laughs> Brindisi. Oh, I've, I put out a bill on Spectrum. Three people supported out of 432, uh, 435 members of Congress. It's dead. It's not going anywhere. You can't tell me, oh, but I wrote the bill and no one read it. You know? <laughs> No one read it. No one cares. It's dead. It's useless. Anthony Brindisi, you failed. 
We it's, say that a lot in this program. <laughs> it's a fact. You oh, fail. Oh, absolutely. It, that's called being ineffective. When no one reads your bill, no one cares about it, it gets no press exposure, and it has zero chance of getting ever passed, you have failed. That is a failure. And that's Anthony Brindisi. He failed. Now, he may not like that. He may want to word it differently. Like, it's got hope, and it's still going through the process, and we're working on this. You can spin it all you want, but the fact is, three people read your bill and like it. That's it out of 434, 435 members of Congress. It's dead. And he can't name, what, every bill he has is between three and five people. That's it. That's dead. That's not going anywhere. I'll give it to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She at least gets like 30, 40, 50 people to support, a, you know, the back a bill that, again, is still dead and won't pass. But she at least gets, you know, a percentage of Congress to back it. But at the same time, so a little far afield there, folks. But I don't know. Maybe you feel differently. Maybe you think, should members of Congress be protected because of their gender? Should members of Congress be protected because of the color of their skin? Is that not a definition of sexism and racism that they want to be treated differently based on their gender and their skin? Doesn't that make them racist and sexist by definition? I find it a little hypocritical too that Omar is coming out and going, oh, I, you're saying I can't criticize the Israeli lobby and all these things, you know, because just, you know, and then we criticize her policies. And she claims, oh, no, 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 it's because of my race. It's because of this and that. Well, the, I notice they always like to say, if you criticize them, well, you're, you're criticizing me because of my race. Matter of fact, uh, it was just in, um, there was an article where it's in Real Clear Politics, and it's Representative uh, Rashida Tlaib. And she's talking about this, and I'll show you guys. Uh, here it is. That uh, the Democrats... Oops, where is it? There it goes. Democrat, Democratic representative Tlaib to Pelosi. Quote, acknowledge the fact that, that we are women of color. I think that Nancy Pelosi, as a woman and as a Democrat, knows that you're women of color. And she recognizes that. But beyond that, in the article, they go on... And uh, she's telling Nancy Pelosi, maybe in this article, maybe another one about this, where, oh, there it is. Uh, she wants them to acknowledge the fact that we are women of color. So when you do single us out, be aware of that and what you're doing, especially because some of us are, being, are getting death threats, because some of us are being singled out in many ways because... Um, because of our backgrounds, because of our experience, and so forth. Okay, let, let's stop right there and think about it. So she's saying that people are singling them out because they're outspoken. People single out Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez because she's a mindless idiot. And that she says really stupid things. Like, what, the, what is the answer to fixing all the problems in the world? Print money. That, that's her answer. We'll just print money. And that's stupid. And she has said that. Uh, she says that we need to build trains to go to Hawaii. That's stupid. Okay. And people point that out. And, she's, and they want you to think. The squad wants you to think. Well, you're, I'm picking on them because they're women. Or because they're women of color. Notice my suntan, by the way. It's really good suntan. And it's free. And it's lifelong. I've never paid for this suntan. Anyway, um, you know, but it's, it's stupid. It's because you're an idiot. I'm talking to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez specifically. She's an idiot. And yeah, I'm going to single her out for that. I single out Ilan Omar because she seems to apparently hate America. And of course, I'm going to call her out on that. Uh, we did get, um, by the way, Christine Peg Pengburn has joined us, Pangler Smith. Uh, and Christina said, if you're going to say stupid things, people will call you out. 
no matter what your race is. And I agree a hundred, a thousand percent. Christine, you're right. When you say dumb things that don't make sense, people are going to say that's dumb and makes no sense. I, I don't understand the difference between that. And, and to say that, and to try and defend it by saying, well, I'm black. Well, I can go around. It. Here's the thing. According to the same illogic of the progressives, like progressive leaders of tomorrow, plot and citizen action, every time I get on and I say something, they theoretically can't argue. I'm a black man. I'm a black Hispanic man. I fail two of their quotas. I'm black and Hispanic. They can't argue with me, according to them, because I, as a black man, have a unique perspective. And if they say something, it's racial. Right? Mm -hmm. So, therefore, but do they agree with that? No. They argue with me all the time. And say, if I said that to them, they go, well, no, that's not correct. Well, then why can't I talk about AOC or anyone else? I mean, does that, doesn't that logic make sense? It's pretty easy logic to follow for you, yeah. I, I think so. And Christine goes on to mention to us, uh, so stop playing the race card. Yes, I'm not playing the race card, but yes, they should stop playing the race card. And they should stop playing the gender card. They're as bad as uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Always. Everything has to be about, well, they're women or they're women of color. How about you're an elected official and you're bad at your job and you don't seem to like America very much? How about that? Let's criticize that. Can you address that issue? And then after that, you know, if someone continues, if someone goes, well, you just said that because you're black. Well, okay, I'll go with that. that that's an argument then. But if you say... I want to build a railroad to Hawaii, then I have a problem with you and it has nothing to do with what race you are. It has to do with the fact that you have no brain cells in your head. That's it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty obvious, I think. It makes no sense. If you tell me that Americans who are absolutely livid, Democrats spent, what, uh, years, since 2010, until 2014, they spent it 28 times. They were all over the news saying over and over again, you can keep your doctors. Obamacare will let you keep your doctors. Don't believe the evil, horrible Republicans who are telling you you're going to lose your doctor. No, no, you're going to keep them. And Americans were livid. And President Obama got the 2013 um, PolitiFact lie of the year because we found out you can't keep your doctor, okay? And people were livid about this. And now AOC is saying that, well, people don't mind. They'll lose their doctors. It's okay. Single-payer health care is so good, you're going to be happy to lose your doctor, to lose your private health care. You're more than willing to lose your private health insurance so that you can get the same health care as everyone in America. And you know what that health care is? Do you know what it is, John? I do not. It means that, John, you get to have OBGYN care. Well, AOC said, I, you know, I don't, no one's going to miss their private insurance. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. That's what I'm talking about. But in, in, under the plan, single-payer health, single health care, Medicare for all, Socialism. everyone gets the same health plan, which means you get to have prenatal checkups. And you will pay in your insurance for prenatal checkups. And if you have a health insurance as a man who doesn't want or have a need for prenatal health care or OBGYN checkups, you will lose that so that you can get a lesser plan that includes that and you'll be charged for it. Don't you feel happy? Feels great. But I can't, com I can't complain about that because if I do... Well, then I'm a sexist and I must be racist because AOC is a woman in black. If that makes sense. Which I don't think it does. I don't know. Christine agrees. She says I'm 100% accurate here. And I'm glad and she's a woman. And so there you go. And if I'm presuming someone's gender based on their name, yes, I am. Deal with it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
I don't, Do you want to have a trigger warning before that one? Yeah, they, the trigger warning is I came on air. We're talking. <laughs> okay, there's your trigger warning. We're going to be speaking. Whether it's I'm speaking live in person or I'm speaking here, it's the trigger warning is I started speaking. Deal with it. Uh, Christine goes on to say uh, her husband worked very hard for the health care that they have. I don't want their health care, meaning AOC and the uh, progressive health care for all, which I agree with you. You shouldn't have that. You should have the choice and freedom to choose whatever health care plan you want. I mean, if they want to go and say, hey, we can have, and this is a Republican idea, why can't I get a health care plan from the state of Alaska that does what I want it to do, which means I don't have to pay for OBGYN, I don't have to pay for prenatal care, a woman could, I don't have to, I'm a man, and I don't, have, I don't apologize for that, and if I can find it, and it's cheaper, and I like it, or even if it's more expensive, and I like it, why can't I have it? Well, no, no, you can't have that, but everyone can have the same thing in the country. Where's my freedom and choice there? What's that? That doesn't help me. I don't need the same health care as every single other person in America. I don't need uh, uh, the same health care as someone who's 90. I don't need the same health care as someone who's 20. I don't need the same health care as someone who's diabetic. I'm none of those things. Why do I want their same health care plan? Why do they want mine? It's stupid. There is no way to define this. Yeah. And honestly, Democrats, they just had a vote on the Cadillac health uh, healthcare tax, Cadillac health plans, where they eliminated the Cadillac tax. And yet again, I'll bring up again, Anthony Brindisi was very popular on his page when he said, you know, I want to support people having choice and everyone should have health care. That's why I voted to get rid of the Cadillac tax. Anthony. You also said you want to give everyone in America single-payer health care. You want to take away people's health care. So I don't understand. He's a very confused man. Yeah, he's uh, he's certainly one heck of a representative. Uh, He's very confused because he says in one breath, he says, I support Medicare for all. I want and I support and want to create uh, single-payer health care. And then on his other voice, he goes, but I'm going to get rid of the Cadillac tax so that everyone can have their choice in health care. You can't do both. Pick a side, Anthony. And I would say that of all, you know, all the Democrats and all the progressives and everyone in Congress, pick a side. You don't get to play both sides of the field on this. Either you're for freedom and people to choose or you're not. You're either going to build a system where people can have choices or not. And you should be able to either give people more choices or not. Don't play this game back and forth. It's confusing, it's stupid, and it just shows that you're inept. You don't understand the issue. And I I would love to see, and if Representative Anthony Brindisi of the New York 22nd District, who will be running in 2020, has any issue with what I'm saying, I say again for the umpteenth time in the last three and a half years, show up on the show, I will give you as much time as you want, I don't edit anything. Talk. Answer my questions. You were elected by barely 50% of this district. You need to hear the other side and do something. You need to respect the people in this district, even the 49% that did not vote for you. And if members of Congress could figure that out, I think that all of Congress would be a lot better. You're not there to represent your party. You're there to represent the people. Get that straight. But that's my point. And that's my point of view. I don't know. What do you think? I think you're spot on like always. I, I genuinely don't have anything to disagree with you on that one. Okay. All right. So I've been talking enough and I've been covering a whole bunch of issues. It's going to be time for you. To, let's, let's, you wanted to talk about... Foreman Mike, oh, wait, wait, wait. we build the wall. Okay, I know. It's Off too in loud. the distance. Shut up. Uh, sorry. Background noise. Switching pages. It automatically comes up. But you wanted to talk about Representative Rashida Tlaib, and you wanted to talk about the BDS, mm-hmm. right? The boycott. 
disinvestment. Uh, dis- is it disinvestment? Disinvestment. Divestment and sanctions, uh, which is pretty much the Israeli boycott. That's the anti-Israel boycott. boycott. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's put on by uh, my favorite representative, uh, Omar. Elon from the Omar. squad, yep, mm-hmm. from the squad, and she's about to drop her own resolution, um, would defend the pro-Palestinian boycott movement against Israel. So, right, and mm-hmm. that was getting some, uh, in case people were wondering, where is that and what is that? You can see it in The Hill, uh, came out today, excuse me, on the 17th at 2.42 p.m., uh, Representative Omar introduces resolution affirming right to participate in boycotts ahead of possible vote on anti-BDS bill. Uh, where Omar and Rashida Tlaib are joined by a couple of others on the far left saying that you have a right to protest. Guess what? I already did. It's called the First Amendment. I also have a right to speak up and tell you that you're idiots. Because you didn't read the First Amendment. Of course I have a right to protest. I don't need another law for that. I already have it. It's, it also just doesn't make sense to me as Israel is one of our strongest allies in the Middle East. Why are we trying to cut off ties with them, it seems like, every turn? And this is the same Ilan Omar who made anti-Semitic comments in the past. And it just seems to be antagonizing Israel who has stood with us through thick and thin. She has a, I will say this, she has a right as a U.S. citizen. Absolutely. To say that she doesn't like Israel. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. Uh, some, no one says that you have to like Israel. International policy is not based on how she feels. Mm-hmm. If she, and if she wants to protest that, if her and Talib both wish to protest Israel, good luck, go for it, do it all day long if you want. But that doesn't mean that we should have a bill mandating that America must boycott and we must boycott Israel. I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. That is not in their purview of their job. They don't get to tell me I need to protest. No, exactly. It's, and I just don't understand why, and these actions will have consequences. Of course. Right. So even just introducing the legislation, it will have consequences and it will affect diplomatic relations with Israel. Why are you taking this to such a national stage, trying to make press releases and everything like that about it, when you could be endangering international affairs? Well, think about it. it this is very encouraging to Iran, because if we're cutting off ties with Israel, who they hate, uh, then this encourages their people and them to kill everyone in Israel. And that's not good. No, no, it's not. <laughs> that doesn't make the Middle East safer for no, anybody. No, Israel's one of the strongest democracies in the Middle East. It is pretty much the only democracy in mm-hmm. the Middle East. And you know what? They've been a strong ally. They've been with us through pretty much its uh, creation of mm-hmm. the state. And we have to show support through them. If they're going to show support for us, which they have in the past, you know, um, their prime minister is Benjamin uh, Netanyahu has been a outspoken supporter of the United States through most everything. And we have a lot to thank him for that. And we, you know, we've had ties with Israel since the very creation of Israel. Whether it be Golda Meir, we helped create the state of Israel. Why are you trying to endanger that? One of our only allies, one of the only allies in the Middle East. Okay, what other ally do we have in the Middle East? Shaky terms with Turkey. That's not really an ally, but okay. That's about it. I mean, we have shaky, very shaky, uh, maybe Pakistan sometimes, India. I'd say India more than Pakistan, Pakistan. on any mm-hmm. given day. Uh, and maybe you can, depending on the day and depending on the president, Saudi Arabia. Um, you know, not so loved by Obama. No. Uh, or rather, Saudi Arabia didn't really love Obama. But yet... We, they have good relations with President Trump, which many people don't like, but yet that gives us more of an influence in the Middle East and why we've seen weaker wars over there. So that has mm-hmm. a factor. But the point I think still stands, mm-hmm. Israel is our ally. Yes. It is our strongest ally. Yes. And it is the ally that is putting in the most work in the Middle East. Yes. 
Those are all true facts. Exactly. And the fact that Omar thinks, you know, that they're the bad guy and that they, you know, she wants to protest and boycott our only ally is ridiculous. Again, if that's her personal opinion, I'm okay with it. Mind you, I'm not the only one. You're not alone. Mm -hmm. I I want people to understand. Uh, Coming from real clear politics, there's also Representative Lee Zeldin of New York who says shame on Ilan Omar for propping up the BDS or anti-Israel movement and blaming Israel. So, and that was on July 17th as well. So you're not alone. You mm-hmm. know, John the intern is not alone. And anyone who says that Ilan Omar is wrong for doing this, uh, you're not alone. Uh, uh, wrong. You're neither wrong nor alone. Mm-hmm. I am on a personal level. I would never stop anyone from protesting anything, even if it's stupid. You want to protest about uh, straws, go for it. That's your thing. It's when you mandate these things. When you introduce it as a resolution, that is that is no longer your personal opinion. You are trying to make it a policy now. You're, you're making policy and you're mandating the direction of the nation, with which has negative consequences for the nation. Now I have a problem. And I'm willing to bet she didn't ask any of her constituents about this. I don't know that she or AOC or anybody, anyone in the squad, asked anyone anything. No. I know they don't talk to you know, people like Nancy Pelosi. In fact, uh, there was another article about this. The squad is telling Nancy Pelosi, the speaker, who's supposed to be their boss, that, they, that she can uh, contact their people to speak with them. I'm like, what? Who are you guys? That the speaker can talk to your people about talking to you. Who are they? Who do they think they are? Like it's- AOC is a former bartender with a really bad economics education. She can't do math. And when this is someone who has to like you have to get the president, the speaker of the house, they have to schedule meetings with her. Why? She represents a district in the nation. She's one of 435 people. She's not that special. She's not special at all. She's special because she's like special ed, but that's about it. And I would say about the same thing for all four of the squad members. What, was that too much? (laughs) I definitely think you will be cut out of context for that one. (laughs) Why? They're going to cut you up. It's not politically correct. I don't care if it's politically correct. It's absolutely factual. I'm just saying as John the intern, the millennial, well, Gen Z or... Whatever. Yeah, I will say that is considered not politically correct anymore. Really? Yeah, oh. Why? Why? I couldn't tell you, but I can tell you that it's uh, it's definitely going to stir up a storm. I can say that. Ah, okay, let it stir up a storm. She's as dumb as a box of rocks. Yeah, that's more politically correct. What's the difference? Making fun of special ed kids. I'm not making. I'm making fun of her. Yeah. I think the special ed kids are smarter than AOC. <laughs> I think they would win an election against her because they can do math. I think those kids are better off than Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. And Surely all her I do. constituents. Uh, and I, I feel bad for her constituents. Can you imagine? They hadn't. I remember watching Laura Loomer did a uh-huh. small documentary about Omar and trying to find out where her office was when she was like six months in. They couldn't find her district office. She didn't have one. Exactly. Six months into her term. Yes. No district office. That's unheard of. But it's not unheard of. Anthony it's Brindisi crazy. didn't have one two months in. Well, six months is a bit long. Though. That is half a year into your term, and yeah. you and it's a two-year term. Yeah. So one fourth of that, she did not have a district office. Yeah, that, that's that, that's weird. Well, if you don't answer to the people, why do you care if they want to talk to you? That's true. You know, mm-hmm. and and you know, if you're like Alexandra Ocasio Cortez, and you believe in everyone being the same, except they can't live in the same apartment building as you because the apartments are fifteen thousand dollars a month. You know, hey, oops, oops. I'm sorry, these people are walking contradictions and they need to be called out for these things. When they're doing stupid things, they say one thing and then they contradict themselves when it doesn't make any logical sense whatsoever. And I do put people like Representative Anthony Brindisi in that group where they're just saying things to get people's emotions going without even understanding what they are talking about. And they're saying things that actually conflict with themselves. 
it just doesn't make any sense. You know, Anthony Brindisi's and, and many of them, they're talking about, oh, we believe in single payer health care, but they're getting rid of the Cadillac tax because they want to give people more freedom for health care. But you want to get rid of the health care in the first place. That's a problem. You're talking about, um, like, with, uh, oh, God, what was I talking about just before? Um, Smoking? No, no, no. Um, oh, God. Yeah, I hate dead air. I'm sorry about that, folks. <clears throat> uh, Anthony Brent didn't see... Oh, higher wages. The, <laughs> the, the wages. You know, and I was talking about earlier today. I was talking about higher wages, and they're talking about, oh, I want to try and help people get uh, a minimum wage, but then you want to close down businesses. It's stupid. It just doesn't make any sense. It, they don't know what they're talking about. They really don't. I don't know. That, that's me. But this is the BDS Omar. It, is anyone supporting her on this? No, not anyone else, I think, other than the squad. No one else is supporting the bill? Not really, no. What, what's the bill number? Um, it's a resolution. Okay, what's the resolution number? Let me find out. Uh, see, you're supposed to know these things. I looked up in uh, Newsweek. It didn't give the exact... Uh, it, it never will. No. The only, the only place that you will ever find on a consistent basis the bill numbers for the bills in Congress, right here on this show. We always do it. You've never seen me talk about a bill and not show you the bill number and tell you the bill number so you can find out for yourself. There's a reason why politicians don't do that. Because they don't want you to know. Mm -hmm. They want you to be, you have to rely on their 30 seconds explanation of a 200 page art, uh, you know, law, and it's never right. Never. Oh, John Lewis is also sponsoring it. Okay, so there's another guy. That's a pretty big name. Eh. Really? I, I, <laughs> I, if we did a poll right now on any social media you want and said, who's John Lewis? People will go, Lewis and Clark. They, they have no idea who he is. I think in political circles they know. And it's HR246. HR246. HR okay. And, and no, I, I, I guarantee you, most people, even in politics, I mean, he's more popular than, say, Anthony Brindisi, but he's not known. No. And he shouldn't be. Because, I mean, what has he done, really? Uh, he was one of the founders of civil... Well, he marched with King in civil rights. Okay. Uh, there's a few people who did that. That doesn't make him a good politician. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Um, he's obviously supporting this bill. Okay, and that doesn't make him a good politician. See, there's the problem. Oh, I was in a civil... I marched in civil rights, which I applaud. Thank you. That doesn't make you a good politician. Makes you a good person. Doesn't make you a good politician. Not the same thing. Has nothing to do with it. Okay? Mm-hmm. I read a book on brain surgery. I'm not Dr. Ben Carson. Does that, I mean, it's the same logic. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I went to Russia. I can speak Russian. I'm not a Russian. I don't believe in communism. Guess what? But I can speak Russian. Da. We have breaking news on the story that we were just talking about. Which one? Uh, the Israeli BDS. Oh, story. okay. Um, Anti-Israel. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, reported from the Hill. Apparently, Israel won't deny entry to Omar and Talib. Oh, yes. They Good. Won't. Good. Let them go there to Israel. I would love to see them to go to Israel and actually talk to Israelis in the Israeli government and ask them and tell them to their face, Hi, uh, we want America to boycott you. Mm -hmm. We will not, the, um, the ambassador, according to the Israeli newspaper, said, out of respect for U.S. Congress and the great alliance between Israel and America, we would not deny entry to any member of Congress into Israel. And I'd love to see those two sit down with members of the IDF who serve their country. I guarantee you that Ilan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, uh, Anya Presley, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez will never go to Israel just like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who was invited to Poland to visit Auschwitz to actually learn what a concentration camp looks like and how they functioned, she denied it. She was directly asked by the Polish government to come to learn what she's talking about, and she wouldn't go. They're not going to go to Israel either. Progressives, 
you know, we're talking about people like Citizen Action. We're talking about Indivisible New York. We're talking about progressive leaders of tomorrow, otherwise known as PLOT. We're talking about the fringe far left. I'm not talking about Democrats. I keep saying progressives because they're not Democrats. These progressives, these democratic socialists, they always refuse to face the facts. Dan Livingston, my, on a local level, he's a city councilman in my area. When he was confronted with facts, he's out there, he's pushing an agenda, and he's misinforming the public. When presented with facts, what did he do? Well, he doesn't like those facts. Who cares? They're so obsessed with how they like something that they run away from any fact that they've ever been presented to them. It's just insulting. It's upsetting. We got three minutes. Um, and Dan, if you don't agree, I've already asked you on the show more than once. I've told you, you have Dan Livingston, councilman, just like Representative Anthony Brindisi. I've invited you on the program to have a conversation with me to address the issues I've talked about. You've refused. That's your fault, not mine. You're still welcome to come on, to call in. I will publish every word of it verbatim. If you don't have the balls to do it, that's not my fault. Go on. Why are people so afraid to come on your show? Because I ask tough questions. Because you're fair. I'm very fair. My interviews are very fair. I've mm -hmm. had interviews with uh, County Executive Jason Garnar, who's a Democrat. I've had interviews with uh, uh, Assemblywoman Donna Lopardo. She's a Democrat. I've had many Democratic candidates come on this program and talk with us and do interviews with us. And I've had Republicans who I disagree with and vehemently have gone out and promoted against. We just had one the other day. We had Laura Loomer on that. We didn't agree with everything she said. Yeah, it's fair. Go you know, check out that interview on YouTube. You can find it on Amazon. Well, many of them. Consulting. You know, mm -hmm. I will, it's not like I'm going to beat up on them. It's, I'll give them a chance. I'll ask the question. You can answer the question. And I will publish it verbatim so everyone can decide mm -hmm. for themselves. Why do they not show up? Because they're afraid. Because then they're on the record. They have to answer the question that no one will ask them. It's because you have the facts right in front of you, too. You're prepared. They well, you are. I do my homework. That's, exactly. why, that's why I know that Anthony Brindisi, as an example, in 2018, said that he believes in uh, both in single-payer health care, which he now seems to be lost on. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know where his position is. And he also said that uh, he's in favor of a living wage, which is higher than a minimum wage, a minimum, wa minimum wage of $15 an hour, but then he just voted against a $15 minimum wage. It makes no sense. There's no logic there. It, 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 you're lost. Stop playing politics. Pick a side and stick with it and give a reason why. I'm not asking for a lot. But he doesn't want to answer that question. And most of the media in the region and in the nation are afraid to ask that same question. I don't know why. Seems pretty straightforward to me. You make no sense. Please clarify. Ooh, you can't say that. It's well, racist because, you know, Anthony Brindisi is a white guy. He's a white Democrat. You can't ask that. It's racist, Mike. I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it's racist because he's white. I don't know. In this crazy world, I'd believe it. It might, be, it might be ageist because he's younger than me. I don't know. That could be it, too. Yeah. yeah. That could definitely be it. I, just, I don't know anymore. It's, it's a crazy world we live in. It's not like even... Five years ago was much different than it is now. Three years ago was much different than it is now. And that's because people were not losing their minds about people's emotions. They were focused on the issues because the issues matter. To quote Ben Shapiro, facts don't care about your feelings. Exactly. And he's right. And he should be right. All right. But we've been on for an hour. Hopefully people went through their lunch. They got to see the show. I see Michael Coletti joined us as well in between. Folks, we are always happy to hear your questions, your thoughts. Uh, you know, as me and John, the intern, go back and forth, trust me, we're always watching for your comments, your thoughts, like Christine was kicking in there, and we're happy to hear them. You can always tell me you think I'm wrong. Tell me why. And I am always open to hear an idea. No, I'm not interested in the black... No, you should have seen this one comment I got off of YouTube. John says, uh, his comment was after the fact. The brown skin guy doesn't like himself. You know what? That's a stupid comment. It's a stupid comment because, one, I'm not brown. Two, uh, I love myself. Three, come on. It, it, this has some substance. But other than that, 
ask away. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me why. Let me help me learn if you think I don't understand the issue. Mm -hmm. And be sure to check out our uh, most recent interview with uh, Laura Loomer that we did. That's because you like Laura Loomer. He's just promoting that he loves her. But it was a good. It was a. Really it was good a very interview. good interview too. Don't and, know. and I think a lot of people will be very surprised. I mean, it's. It, it, it was a shocking interview. Yeah, and like I said, I didn't agree with everything she said. Yeah, there's a whole section in there. I was just like, what? But the it, second half, yes. Yeah, yeah. The second half is just what, and folks, you got to see that. That's just you'll be amazed. All right, but with that said, everyone, I hope you had a great lunch. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back on really, really soon. Uh, we love you all, and I hope everyone's going to have a great weekend. Thanks. <laughs>